What's going people? Hey guys, how y'all doing? Good to see you again. Now, welcome back to the Delpred family. It's right. always good to have you guys here with us. Yes. So in today's video, I'm sure that a lot of you guys will be looking forward to it. But what will we be talking about today, Adrian? Yeah, so we'll be talking about the three key principles to adapt if we want to be financially independent and successful, right? These things are what the elites don't tell us. They are, they are crucial, you know? So they basically, are crucial. we'll be talking about three money moves that we all need to make, mm -hmm. all right? These are the money moves that are the people who make money, yeah. are the persons who are getting more and more affluent mm -hmm. in life mm -hmm. that they are in, that they have implemented right. and are currently implementing. Right. So one of the three. Three. Yep. So one of the first ones we're gonna talk about is budgeting. We'll be telling you why actually making a budget is is very important. That's like the first step to anything at all. Um, you want to do basically whether it be for business or financial personal. financial but once once it has to do with money you must do a budget so basically a budget is mm -hmm. uh, a plan for your finances um, expenditure profits mm -hmm. whatever it is planned for your money for a specific period of time what mm -hmm. do you plan to do with your money a, the bud a budget is the perfect way to actually know how you spend your money right. so if you're gonna say hmm we get hundred dollars from our pay right. last month when we do it the, the the one way for you to find out what you're doing with that money is to actually do a budget correct all right so in the budget you have to have your income and your expenditure, expenditure. columns all right and that will tell you how much you're making in much, totality and how much you're spending yes. yes how much you're spending where you're spending it on right. all right the budget is important guys because at the end of the day we want to be living within our means yes and this is the key element to, to what we are saying all right yes uh, living in with living within your means includes us having savings or investments at the end of the month all right but this is important because at the end of the day we don't want to as we jamaica we say be living from hand to mouth so listen guys on our, on our live we mentioned this book, the big book of everything. Yes. And we can't go into this topic without mentioning this book again. Right. Because this book can really help you guys out in terms of um, living within your means. Mm -hmm. There's an entire section for that. Yes. There's an entire section for budgeting that we're talking about. So um, if you're one of those persons who really want to know, really want to start making those money moves, mm -hmm. like this book is one that I would say is, is one that is great to have on your bookshelf and in your head. Now guys, the link to this book, it will be in the description, all right? And it's very affordable. It's written by a young Jamaican, all right? So we always talk about buying Jamaican and this is, you know, one way we can do that to build our community, you know? Uh, support Jamaican businessin, businesses and of course this book is vital we find we have found this book being very very, very, yes. very helpful so far all very right useful information sure right so anapalamino.com www.anapalamino.com is where you can find the book and of course on checkout right of course enter our discount code the delprat family to to get some discounts yeah. all right guys so yes the big bad book of everything yes so it, so basically you have to live within your means a part of living within your means is not only saying okay we make ten dollars so we spend ten dollars mm -hmm. but what about your future we have to always put that into perspective yes um so what and especially in this book what we um what we're about to show you is basically an idea of how you can structure your income mm -hmm. so for example um adrian likes the um 50 30 20 or 50 20 30 um, rule to budgeting yes. where you have your needs column and your needs column basically um, encompasses all of your expenditures your expenses your water bill your light bill your rent or mortgage mm -hmm. your car note so all of your needs whatever it may be whatever bills you have to pay whatever loans you have yep. goes in your needs column yes. 
and ideally they should not pass 50%, 50 of your salary right if your needs is passing 50 percent of your salary then you're in trouble and you know what when you go for a loan mm -hmm. at financial institutions this is one of the things that they look for as well so mm -hmm. if your loan capacity um if if, if your expenditure is it's more than 50 percent or 40 percent of your overall income then they're afraid you know who can't pay me true. you know who says true reasonably yeah. true um the next is 20. now the 20 represents your wants right um the little things that you want to do you want to go out you want to buy clothes mm -hmm. you want to so the little things that you'd want to spend money on to that expensive louis v bag that you've been eyeing in the store you know all of these things will come in the one section and remember guys it should be Ideally, be like twenty percent of your of your, your total um, monthly budget, yes. and that will remain. That will leave you with a remainder of thirty percent. Now, this thirty percent, uh, in order, as we say, in order for you to be financially, to 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 become financially successful or independent, most important part of mm -hmm. your money moves. The thirty percent, you should look to put that down for investments and savings and insurance. Right. So these are very important because yes. this is what is going to make you more affluent in mm -hmm. the future. Yep. This is basically money that's going to help to propel your future. Yes. All right. So if you're really thinking about it, if you're in a position where you can make, you can reduce your wants. Mm -hmm. I would say I would want to reduce my needs and wants yeah. as much as possible mm -hmm. and to increase my um, section for savings, um, investment and insurance. And when you look at it, this is what is going to make you, give you the possibility of really increasing your future, whether it is to invest in a house, um, invest in a business, whatever it is, go back to school. Mm -hmm. This is what is going to make that possible for you. All right, guys. So the, the, 50, the needs and wants should add up to around 70%. Um, anything more than that, you're going into the red zone, right? So really looking to, to minimize this needs and wants section as much as possible. Yeah. So guys, if you find that your expenses push you over into the red zone, right? Then you have to go, you have to look at things that you, you, you probably need to cut back on. So guys, if you're in the red zone, right? Then you're going to have to look at ways you can restructure your life. Um, maybe a car yeah. no, maybe a car payment is too big. Remember, we're talking about living within our means now. Yeah. Maybe a car payment is too big, right? You maybe buy an expensive car and though you can afford it, quote-unquote, but really, you it, can't afford, you can't it, afford really. it because they're pushing it into a hand-to-mouth way of living. Yeah. Maybe the apartment that you're living now, the rent is too expensive, right? Maybe even if you bought a house, the mortgage payment too much. You're gonna have to look at ways that you can maybe rent out a room, build on a section where you can rent it out. So, so, so your mortgage is supplemented. Yeah. All of these things. Maybe you are taking too many trips to the, to the, to the bar, you know, the sports bar. All of these things. Too many can... hotel trips. Mm -hmm. Too many day passes, girls. Right. Guys. Yeah, man. This basically wraps up this segment. It brings us to section number two. So, guys. The second step to making big money moves mm -hmm. is reducing debt liability. Now there's a difference. You have good debt and you have bad debt. True. You can have a debt that is bringing in money. Mm -hmm. So for example, you, um, you've bought property or land that you're now using to earn money. Mm -hmm. That's a debt that is bringing in money. Right. right? So you're earning from that. Right? So that's a good thing. But then you have some debts that are just liabilities. Um, all you're doing basically is losing money every mm -hmm. single month. It's like it's like you're emerging. Right. Even like a, the credit card. You know the credit card. The interest rate is so expensive, right? But at the same time, we're not saying we want to demonize credit cards because there there's a there's, there's a good, good way, way to, to use, use credit, credit card, card and there's a bad way to use it. Mm -hmm. So debt liability. We have to reduce those debts that's making us hemorrhage, mm -hmm. right? We have to reduce the debt, especially if you're in a situation that Adrian said where your debt ratio, your high. debt percentage is far too high and you mm -hmm. cannot fit into that 50, 20, 30 category. Right. If you find yourself moving out of that 50, you're in trouble. Just to say, and you need to reduce that debt liability. Now, Adrian would like to mention two ways that is mentioned in the big bad, bad book of everything, everything yes right and i'll tell you my favorite yes 
All right, so um, there are two steps. There are two ways, basically. The avalanche method or the snowball method. Both of these are geared towards getting your debt as low as possible. Clearing yeah. off debt as low as possible. So In the fastest possible mm -hmm. time. There are two ways to approach them. Yes. You can either use what, in, what Anna Palomino called the snowball mm -hmm. effect yes. or the avalanche effect. Right? Um, the snowball effect is actually... So you basically tabulate every single debt you have. Every, every single, single one. one. You tabulate them all. Then of course you organize your debt from the smallest to the biggest. So for example, you owe your friend twenty five thousand, or your credit card payment, your credit card debt is maybe at fifty thousand, right? So these will probably be at the, at the front of the list. You then look to knock these down as quickly as possible, so you get rid of these. And remember also that the credit card in attracts a lot of interest. So of course the quicker you knock it off, the better. Right, so you look to tackle these ones first and then you move on to, to the, the others. Ones. So this is what they call the snowball. Right? So you start to basically um, start to see the, those deaths being written off or crossed yeah. off immediately. Yes. Um, the second one is the one that I prefer the most, which is the avalanche. Avalanche. Because that takes into consideration the interest rate that you'll be paying on each loan that mm -hmm. you now have. Mm -hmm. So for example, if you have 10 loans, and you would organize those loans by way of interest rates. Mm -hmm. So you pay off, basically you start tackling the loan with the highest interest rate first. And for some people that could be a credit card, it could be a high interest loan that you have to mm -hmm. say, for example, your car loan or an unsecured loan that tends to attract a pretty big expenditure, expense mm -hmm. um, or interest rates. Right. So basically you tackle those those loans with the biggest interest rate first and i like it because for me is i'm basically saving more money peace of mind too. yeah i'm saving more money when i tackle those loans with the bigger interest rates because at the end of the day those interest rates is gonna you know cost me a lot lots of money, money. yes so that's what i like the most and that i um implement the most um in my budgeting because guys the thing is you know the loan sometimes when you check it out you borrow just for argument's sake, twenty-five thousand, and it, it, you're gonna take five years to repay. At the end of this, these five years, you know, you're gonna probably be paying fifty or sixty thousand dollars, you know. So, depending on the interest rate, of course. So, with the bigger interest rate loans, you pay them off quicker. You you hemorrhage less money. And All then, right? and then when you look at it, um, alright. For example, the idea just came to me. You did a higher purchase loan, right? A lot of the times, what they do with higher purchase loan is that you basically are paying a fixed amount. So if you took out the loan for two years, they already calculated the amount of money that you would have paid for mm -hmm. the two years. And you basically, that's the amount. They will say if you pay it off early, you'll get a little bit off. But the little bit, to be honest, is very minute mm -hmm. in proportion to the entire sum. Mm -hmm. But for example, if you have a credit card yes. or an unsecured loan with mm -hmm. a bigger interest yes. rate, if you knock off those loans First, faster yeah. than you knock off the higher purchase loan, you're mm -hmm. actually saving far more money. Yes. So that's where the reasoning come from, comes from with the yes. avalanche method. Because we're going to put things into perspective, guys. So for example, now, an unsecured loan can be up to 25% interest rate, right? Yikes. Credit card, I say say credit card, and then big interest rate there too. I don't remember exactly how much, but it's it big, right? So if you pass, if after the, the um, what you call it, payment period, they yeah. start giving interest, and then big amount they are pay, guys. And I, I, when they come, then, then now, when you look at student loans, student loans is at a lower interest rate. So you can tackle the loan them according to this. Exactly. Because in the end guys, we want to get our needs, which is our mm -hmm. loan payments, down to as much as we can. Because remember, we want to escape the red zone. Remember the red zone that we mentioned before? This is what we want to escape yeah. from, you know? Yes, yes, definitely. And when you're looking to take out loans, it's, it's very important that you look at the, look at the fine lines, yes. look at the interest rates, mm -hmm. look at the payment, repayment method. Yeah. Don't be tricked. Not every loan you can pay off fast. 
all right not every bank loan mm -hmm. not every institution loan allows you to pay it off fast some of them True. have restrictions on their loans and the higher purchase to like for furniture purchase, and so on CLT. yes they want to secure that interest rate so you have to find out when you're taking a loan what kind of loan am i getting mm -hmm. what kind of credit card am i getting what's the interest rate what's my benefit play your cards right all right what yeah. we are doing is putting basically Putting our mouth to action, putting yeah. our mind to action. So whatever yes. we say, we are actually putting it into, into action. action. Right. Um, and then that's what we hope to accomplish from our channel, to spread the news that mm -hmm. we have, spread the information that we've learned. Um, basically, we love the topic of finances because mm -hmm. we don't want to, you know, be at the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> We want to find ourselves um, ascending to the top and we found that educating yourself is the best way to do that. Correct. When you get knowledge, gaining knowledge, trust me, affects your moves and it affects your money moves. So make the right money moves, guys. Mm. Now, the, the final step or the third step is acquiring appreciating assets. Yes. This is, this is big because a lot of times we are programmed, and we mentioned this in a previous video, we are programmed to get a job, right? Yeah. Start earning and then immediately you start for the car loan, you start buy this, you start buy that. So the car will rack up. And basically what we are doing, we are, we, are, we are eating, we are eating ourselves away, you know? You know, because what will happen is, remember the salary is fixed. Most people's salary are, is fixed. So you constantly take out more loans, more jewelry, clothes, shoes, and then at the end of the day, your salary is not increasing. Your finances, yeah. it's like on to mouth. And, and again, guys, as we age, our expenses increase. Yes. Right? So if you are stuck with the one same salary, mm -hmm. especially if you're not spending money there, right? Why? You're in, a, you're in a problem. Trust me. Like, we know what's happening here. We know the finances. So right about now, we're going to put an image on the screen. Yes. And this is one of the big differences between persons who are just poor and stop being poor yep. and the persons who are making big, big money moves big money. and collecting right. collecting and, and, and are living affluent lives. Mm -hmm. So one of the big things that they do is to acquire assets. Mm -hmm. You have to increase your earning potential. You have to increase the amount of money you earn. And reducing liability. So um, for the middle class, or I would say based on how we are taught to be honest this is how we were taught you have your income which is a fixed salary right and then you you appreciate liabilities which is like the mortgage the car note the credit card the student loan and of course the student loan is not necessarily expendable because not everybody born rich for can with them parents can or pay them, them, them the, yeah or had the luxury mm -hmm. of getting their education given to them free right so the middle class would have the one income and then them just put on more so this is basically how the middle class or the poorer class function right versus the the more wealthier class of people right they of course they have several streams of income right them have rental income like from real estate probably some um rental car business yeah. they have dividends right they have interest Mm -hmm. perhaps from 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 loan from businesses yeah right they have royalties not everybody can can um, have intellectual property do but i mean a lot of uh, i think mm -hmm. i think some of the time we sell ourselves short yeah i think a lot of the time we can actually get royalty from our content mm -hmm. but we need to look into it not if we can't or we mm -hmm. don't have the talent but we need to true. look into that again true, true. a lot of us are cre very creative creating mm -hmm content creating viable valuable um resources and we're not being paid for it True. so look into it guys so when you look at it the rich has a lot more money coming in mm -hmm. they have a lot more money coming in and it has to do with how they spend their money so when they have free money it's not used and you might think it might use it for plus mm -hmm. but really their free money is used to make more money True. right the mother is this saying nowadays say you want fresh money where well, the yeah. only way to get fresh money is use old money to get new money. Yeah. <laughs> use old money to get new money and the rich knows how to do that mm -hmm. by accumulating assets. So you see that investment section that we spoke about, you know, in the in the first section, section. Mm -hmm. of uh, of this video. We're talking about that thirty percent. 
and I was saying if you know that you can increase your your amount your investment and savings amount to be more than 30 percent of your salary you you need to go for it mm -hmm. right put in that money get the assets get the investments get more money at right. the end of the day yeah guys so as we're saying now back to step three we have to look to increase our assets yeah right increase real estate you know look to purchase real estate because these things are not depreciating these things are always appreciating mm -hmm. right so even while you're asleep real estate is able to make money for you yeah. so these are the things that we should look to do and uh, these are the things also that the elites these are the kind of habits that the elites have that keep them there yes you know look for look for attractive up and coming investments and that's what they put their money in as well right so Look for all the new upcoming um, activities that you can put your money in the areas. Mm -hmm. You don't have to stick to real estate. You can go into um, online virtual companies, right. invest in businesses that are coming up. Mm -hmm. How much, how much um, shares in a particular company, company for example, purchase, yeah. um, Fontana and, and all those companies. How much, how much stocks in those companies can I accumulate and how much do I see myself accumulating in the, in, in the coming years? Mm -hmm. So say you're 30 now and you've invested in a burrito stock mm -hmm. and you leave that there continuing to increase your investment um, over the years. And now you're at a 10, 10 year mark and the company has just quadrupled in mm -hmm. its profit mm -hmm. so over the years you've been gaining so much wealth from this and mm -hmm. at the end of the day you can reap the benefit reap the reward right. um what i would also like to say is on the side of intellectual property uh, one of the biggest ways that we can make money is by solving a problem and a lot of us know how to solve problems mm -hmm. a lot of us have talents that we can use to make extra income one of the ways that you can increase income is by increasing your own self as an asset. You are an asset too, so you True. can increase the value of your own self, right? Um, by learning a new skill, investing more into what you can do, yep. learning more about it, learning more about that trade so you can gain more money from that in the future. Right. Yeah, guys, so these are the key steps that the wealthy use and the key things that we should be looking to implement in our daily living guys in order for us to be more successful as you know individuals yes. so guys if you like the video definitely leave us a thumbs up all right and i would definitely encourage you um especially if you are looking to increase your finances looking into how i can um set myself for the future the coming future look into this book the big bad book of everything, everything i love yes. the way how she explains it right it is easily understood yep. um and there are examples for you to follow as so we say guys great. link is in the description all right and of course use the delprat family the delprat family as the discount code at checkout to, and you will to get, get a discount, discount to the purchase right you guys thanks for watching all right bye peace out